so excited. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. We got a jam-packed day full of a ton of information to help all of you grow your Amazon business. Our members a uh, couple days ago. I don't know if he's here, Muhammad. I saw him in Orlando. I don't know if he made it, but he asked a question. He asked, you know, he said he was struggling finding suppliers, and he asked a question. So I just said, you know, I, I I did it live on Facebook. I'm like, okay, look here, beauty supplies. So I I thought of beauty suppliers, and I thought of retail stores, and I thought, oh, Sally's Beauty. So then what I did was I typed in Sally's Beauty Distribution Center. And what did I find? I found a lot of LinkedIn warehouse positions for Sally's Beauty uh, Distribution Center. And I found them in Florida. So then I found the address of it. And I said, if I lived in Florida within a six hour range of that, I would spend the day on the street where that distribution center is and see all the different trucks coming in, all the different yeah. suppliers coming into that place. I would be paying attention on the road when I'm driving looking at all the different trucks on the road and what the names are on there because those are opportunities those are opportunities yeah so just go to cvs park out back for like four hours <laughs> don't be weird don't be weird don't be weird <laughs> before being able to scale up any tip to find a new product which i can sell 80 units per day yeah the 80 units <laughs> It's a very specific question. It's like it's like almost it's like fifty percent of the Instagram questions I get. They're so specific that it's like, oh my god, that's a very specific question. But listen, do your research. You know, you're gonna find some winners, you're gonna find some losers. I think, and a lot of you would agree, a healthy FBA business, you got the SKUs that are moving ten a month, making, you know, seven, ten dollars on, and then you got the SKUs that are selling three hundred, four hundred a month, making three or four dollars on. So a healthy mix of both, you know, but if you want to find those winners, you could do a reverse ASIN search. It's reverse engineering, we call it. We have a dope video on our YouTube channel that breaks it down, but you kind of look at like the top 100, top 500 sellers in any category and you reverse engineer it and you figure out the manufacturer, you figure out some of its wholesalers, then you start contacting them. So you can find specific products that move well. Go ahead, Carl. Just catch us up online with questions after I consolidate. Yeah. Um, yeah, from a friend of mine, Tom, if you were starting again today, where would you start? How would you go about finding new relationships? Yeah, if I were starting today, I would start in the beginning the same way we did. Because all the processes that we've built are the same. And the only difference is if I was starting today, I would spend a lot more time now that the knowledge is available, learning from others who succeeded before me. See, the company we were talking about prior that company, they didn't sell on Amazon, but they were successful. They taught, they taught us about counting steps and everything that we're really talking about. They taught a lot to us about how to do that. There weren't Amazon sellers that were successful showing their processes. There wasn't even an Amazon seller app where we could scan. We had to go in with notebook and pen, write down products, retail arbitrage, go home, do the research, go back to the store, repeat, rinse, wash, whatever, a hundred, you know, 10 times a day. Literally, there was yeah. times where we did that 10 different times in the minivan, in the caravan. Uh, so now, with all the knowledge available, I would grab that knowledge and I wouldn't sit in analysis paralysis because too many do that, where they get this information, then they get home and do nothing about it. Take action. That's it, today. Like, if you don't take action today, until I took action on day one, this, nothing happened. Yeah. Everything was the same. Um, a whole bunch of variations of this, but should you look at your Amazon for business reports? And if so, how often? Yeah, you should look at them, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have... <laughs> yes, you should look at your business reports. Um, you know, but there's some phenomenal services, like a reason to look at your business reports would be like reimbursements, right? Are you getting reimbursed for your returns? Or is Amazon losing inventory? But there's some phenomenal companies that do that for you, you know? So uh, as far as business reports goes, I don't look at business reports frequently, um, but you know, I'm looking at our payment reports frequently to see if there's any charges that are, you know, just out of the normal. One day, Sebastian, um, if Ted was here, he would not be happy, but I'll share it with everybody. But uh, Sebastian, we turned on our inventory placement because we, what was the reason? I don't remember. 
We were getting shipments. We were getting shipment split, places, right? We were getting shipment split. So we turned on our inventory placement and it was whatever. It's a lot of ASIN. So it was like maybe $2,000 per truckload. And then we forgot to turn it off and we sent out 10 or 12 truckloads. So it was like a $40,000 mistake, you know, because we weren't looking at, at our reports. So it's important to just kind of dive into those a little and just understand them. Absolutely. Uh, so ideally, ideally, how much money do you need to uh, start wholesaling? I, I would say between three to $5,000 is the optimal price point. You can start with less, more is always better. Yeah, also uh, like, for example, like uh, I'm doing retail arbitrage and uh, I started 30 months ago and I already made like around 50,000. Amazing. And I, I want to move to wholesaling, but I'm just like, kind of like hesitating on like whether or not the product's gonna move or not. But like what advice could you give me on that? You'll know it'll move. You just do the keeper research. Yeah. Keep it literally will tell you every single thing about the listing. Prices and what its historical rank is. You know, you look at the competitive seller. Same way you're doing your retail arbitrage research. Unless you're just scanning stuff, buying it, not looking at anything. You know, but you're looking at ranking and pricing. It's the same thing, except instead of buying 10 unit units, you're buying 80 or 120. So you just got to be a little more aggressive with your purchasing, which can be uncomfortable to begin with. Thank you. Javier. Back to the LTO shipments that are taking like super long to check in pallets and all that. I don't know if I understood correctly. You said that you rather use like a third party shipping company rather than Amazon's partner company? Yes. Yes, right? Yeah. So be like create I'm sorry, LTO shipments and then instead of Amazon partner you do like my own or other, other. 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 Yeah. and then you put like all the information about the pallets, you get in contact with the company and just put like a routing number, like a like a ship like a tracking number or something? Like to get like the appointment time or um, so, and tell me if I'm wrong. Basically, you want to know how to set up an Amazon shipment using a different carrier than Amazon partner carrier. And how does the appointment get set up? In 2021, 99% of US carriers have shipped the product in Amazon fulfillment center. When you go into your managed FBA shipment, you're gonna choose other after you've already received the quote or multiple quotes from your broker, whoever you use and you've chosen that carrier, they will handle the rest. They'll have their appointment, and at their appointment time, they'll deliver it because it's their own private trailer versus Amazon who could just leave it in a parking lot. All right, you've been very patient back there. What's your name? Anna. Anna, please ask away. So Anna's question was, can you use, can you run two Amazon business out of the same facility? My first question would be, are both businesses owned by the same person? No. So they're completely separate businesses? Yes. So then, yeah, you could just communicate with Amazon. You know, there's other places where multiple sellers, there might be a warehouse that's shared with five. We have another Amazon seller in the same building as us. You know, so you just would communicate, hey, there's another Amazon seller next door to me. We're at the same location. We're sharing this place. And you communicate that with Amazon. And the reason why you communicate it through a case is so there's literally logged documentation saying, hey, I have this additional business. Amazon saying, or there's an additional business running at the same location. Amazon saying, Okay, that's okay. So if anything happens, you could just forward them that information. Same exact address, you can do that. Yeah. Yes. If it's two different companies not owned by the same person, then right. absolutely. Same product, right? Same instance. All the same yeah. instance? Yeah, it could, it could definitely yeah. get, <laughs> if y'all are sharing, it could definitely get challenging. Sharing the, the warehouse. Yeah, that's not an issue. And then also, I mean, I don't know if it's like a thing, like they say, do not open your Amazon or like on the same online, on the same internet, you know, because of IP addresses, Amazon doesn't like that. It looks like you're operating two problem. shops in the same place and then they can cancel. So yeah, so is that true? Uh, is it true? I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't open in the same IP address then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, if I hear that that's a possible concern, why? Why, just go, go to your neighbor's house who doesn't sell on Amazon and open it there. My name is Mike Aguayes. I actually do have more than one Amazon store. Okay. Um, and what I did was, it's all under my name, my social security that I incorporated and I moved it to the corporation. And what I did was I used, you have to use a different bank account which has a debit card. And that's what stops you from doing it. Mm. But if you have different bank accounts with a different debit card, um, you can do it. And what I did was I never, I used the same laptop, but I always ran on a different browser. Chrome, Firefox, um. and there's a lot. There's there's absolutely a lot of different ways you can set up multiple accounts. 
you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. You can have multiple accounts under one business as long as they're selling different products. No issue. So you do not yeah, need to. I never mix, you know, no, but you don't need to do that. With, with you don't need to do that anymore. You could you could bring them all well, home. Bring them home. My no, but I do have a question. Uh huh. Um, how do you go over the topical restrictions? Because I've had products that I've sold on my stores, and then all of a sudden Amazon will slap a topical restriction on it, and then all of a sudden then I can't access it anymore. How can I do that? Do I need to hire somebody to do that? Yes, Vanessa. Um, <laughs> reach out to her. Um, for topical restrictions, the question is topical restrictions. If you have issues with topical restrictions, how do you handle that? There are a lot of people that understand the inner, inners and outers of Amazon and how to work that be between reports, catalog compliance, all those issues. But also, it really is, it, it, we'd have to get down to the specifics, the nitty and gritty, to know what it is. Is this a product that the UPC doesn't match the ASIN? Maybe a seller created it using their own UPCs, so Amazon will never be able to find the information on it. Hey, We're here. Carlos. Right, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Everybody, Michael. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, everybody.